Welcome to Milking the Podcast. Oh my god. All right, start it over. <laughs> I already fucked it up. We screwed it up already? Oh no. <laughs> Milking the Podcast. Milking the Podcast. The Cow Crash uh, Comicals. Cow Crush Crupicals? The Candy Crush Chronicles. Excellent. Um, oh, man. <laughs> what if we had a Candy Crush podcast, Tanner, and we just talked about Candy Crush? Hey, we're talking candy today, motherfucker. That's right. Uh, the um, real name of this little show please. that you're listening to is uh, the... <laughs> now I can't remember it. Uh, <laughs> we are... Milking the franchise. Milking the franchise. Milking the franchise. The Cash Cow Chronicles. Uh, my name's Chris. And I'm Tanner. Yeah. And what uh, an intro. We're professional podcasters, by the uh, way. Absolutely. You couldn't um, tell. Yeah. And uh, this is a show where we uh, pick a movie franchise and we watch all the movies and uh, we read all the books and the graphic novels and the video games and the board games and whatever other stuff we can find. Um, and uh, yeah, we're talking, uh, we're talking Willy Wonka today. We're talking Wonka. Um, we're talking basically how, you know, Every good franchise turns into a uh, money-making machine in all sorts of different ways, um, and how every franchise gets milked to death. Um, yeah, so that's the theme of the pod. Chris, what's the theme of your day looking like? Ooh, my day? Well, let me tell you, Tanner. Or your week? <laughs> uh, last night, I ordered DoorDash. I ordered Indian food, and mm. uh, the food that was delivered was not my order. Um, mm. and I didn't open it right away. So I didn't notice until the, the guy was already gone. And, uh, and the food that he delivered was way more, like it was a much more expensive order than what I had ordered. And so I ended up eating it and I was feeling a little bit like a King and like I was getting away with something, um, cut to, uh, 1am last night with me puking in the toilet and, uh, karma came back and it, it got me, oh. got me pretty good. <laughs> What really? So I'm a, I'm a little sleepy today. So if I'm if I'm dragging, um, you can you can blame it on the these these delicious little like Indian empanadas. Oh, they were so good, but I ate like way too many of them and then threw up. So wow, that's oh, no. my life. Pretty exciting so it was, things going on out here. It was from it was from the same <laughs> restaurant. Yes, but they, wrong order. the driver. Okay. I think the driver delivered the wrong order to my address. Like he brought the wrong bag up. Oh my! And you got yeah. sick. You know, I've I've got a little <laughs> something too from maybe something I ate yesterday. Uh -oh. Um, not as bad. No, no vom, but you know, not feeling great. You know, at the other end. Um, I you know, you know what it was. I work at a restaurant and I ate a bunch of like, there was like a buffet for people and I ate a bunch of those like hours after it'd been sitting out. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was on a, you know, buffet tray and it was under a, a fire, but it still was like a bad idea. Um, yeah. And dear listener, if you didn't want to hear about Tanner and my intestinal struggles, you should not have listened to a Willy Wonka podcast. Um, yeah. Uh, There's going to be a lot food. of talk. There's going to be a <laughs> lot of talk about that today. Without a doubt. Um, well, that's okay. We're both in the same similar vibe. You sound like you got it worse than I, I did for sure. Uh, I'm doing fine. Just didn't sleep great. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Are you, are you off work right now? Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. For, okay, cool. For the break? No, no, no. I got one week left. One week left. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you're not in your classroom right now teaching? <laughs> that was how I heard that question. <laughs> like you're not at work with, with children around. Uh, and no, I'm not children you're now. just but like we got one, one week left yeah quiet down i gotta do this i gotta do this pod <laughs> i gotta cuss about willy wonka kids you want to hear about quiet my there, my kids. vomiting mm -hmm. <laughs> um cool well that's great stuff um chris let's uh let's <laughs> talk about what we do here we um another part of this podcast that we do is we release surveys with every movie um, oh yeah and ask you guys to follow along and listen along with what we watch and answer funny questions and give us funny prompts and give us great material to read on our podcast. Help um, us make jokes, you know, help us make jokes, you know, really time. just start conversation is what I try to do with these surveys. Uh, get people mm -hmm. talking about it because you know, how many times do you watch just like with our bad movie night, how many times do you watch a movie and you like, you maybe go to a movie with someone and you guys just kind of leave and you never talk about it. That happens a lot. 
I like to talk about it after. Not here on this show. We talk about uh-uh. it every week. Maybe That's too we much. Do. We talk about it so much, <laughs> you'll never want to watch it again. You might be the uh, one throwing up tonight from how much we're talking about <laughs> movies. That might be you. <laughs> That's our hope every week. Yep. Um, so, yeah, last week we finished RoboCop. So we watched all four RoboCops. Um, and we're going to quickly wrap that up here with a RoboCop remake survey from the, Ro- the remake from 2014. Um, so if you're following along, this is very interesting to you. If you're a new listener, you know, maybe skip ahead like 10 minutes and yeah. <laughs> start up the Willy Wonka stuff. Unless um, you're real curious about 2014's RoboCop, because that's what you're going to be getting for a couple minutes here. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's a good time. Let's do it. RoboCop, here we go. Um, so we got seven responses. Thank you to the Reddit, the subreddit for RoboCop. They are... Woo-hoo. It's, you know, probably the same five or six, seven people that keep responding, which I appreciate them. Um, we asked you what your favorite line of this movie was. And it was, the winner was, I wouldn't buy that for a dollar. I know, little, they like the callback. The little callback, turn it around mm-hmm. on its, you know, flip it over. Um, close second was, hey, doctor, what happens if I tase an exoskeleton with a little asshole inside? Great line. <laughs> <laughs> great line i laughed out loud when that one came on during the movie <laughs> uh next question Be- best change from the original trilogy um the worst the the winner overwhelmingly was ed 209 is capable and threatening that's the okay worst change. and i oh, agree. best change best change be careful oh best change yeah oh they like that okay they like that I disagree yeah. i yeah um, what did you what did you vote for on this one i'm curious motorcycle Okay. You know, I love that motorcycle. I know. What about you? Motorcycle. Um, let's see. Scroll through them. I think I voted for one at the bottom. Um, Way more family interaction. I did. I, I think I voted for that one. I didn't really like any of these changes, to be honest, but that one was the one that I felt was most justified. So um, I guess people like that the Ed 209 is, is like... It's scary. scary yeah. Now. But I like I liked the silly Ed 209. The incompetent, yeah, me too. bumbling, yeah, 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 falling okay. down the well, stairs. Well, hey, our listeners are idiots. I'm just kidding. never. I don't want you to ever listen again. <laughs> you disagree with me. Um, okay, next question is the copy paste, but worst change from the original trilogy. We got a tie between no robotic aspect has his full human personality. So that was right. that was a big change. Yeah, that it wasn't like a robotic person with a little bit of a you know a like, little bit of his memories he was like fully himself inside yes it was just that alex murphy 100 percent, but with robot stuff superhero alex murphy yeah yep and then the the tie with that was um his suit people didn't like his suit and his cool visor um i'll agree with that one too did not yeah. care for that yeah, yeah. trying too hard to be cool yeah. Um, favorite A-list actor. So there's a ton of good people in this movie. We got a three-way tie between Michael K. Williams, Gary Oldman, and Michael Keaton. Love it. There you go. Nobody voted for Dusk, aka Abby <laughs> Cornish. <laughs> well, let's put her on the survey again this week just to see. Maybe, maybe people missed her. <laughs> Even though you put her name in all caps. Well, that is. <laughs> That's how her, her alter ego is spelled with all caps. Oh, that's how it's spelled. Okay. All well, and yeah, you look up Dusk, Abby Cornish, her, her musical side project. Um, it's all caps, yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, in the movie, Gary Oldman makes robot arms for a guitar player, and he plays a beautiful classical song. What emotionally resonant song would you want to hear next? We got the overwhelming winner was Wonderwall by Oasis. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. Again, nobody voted for Dusk. No. Unfortunate. But two people voted uh, think... for Focus by, or Hocus Pocus by Focus. Oh, excellent. That uh, yodeling <laughs> song that they play over the, the gun scene. Uh, yeah. And I think that purple one's a write in. Yeah, that's Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, other write in totally just was crazy. No Idea, which, you know. Doesn't need yeah. to be written in, but all right. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just saying that uh, if that song had been Baby Shark, that would have 
really changed that scene. I like uh, I like the visual of that. <laughs> um. Well, you know, he's he's a family man. Probably mm-hmm. goes home and wants to show off to his kid. Look what I can do. Mm-hmm. Um. So in this movie, he kept calling RoboCop Tin Man. Um. One of the guys did. Hey, Tin Man. So besides Tin Man, what insult would you use on a RoboCop? We got Metal Mouth, Copper Daddy, Ooh. Aluminum Can Man, uh, Chrome Dome, nice, Ooh, tin, nice. tin Pig. Yeah, uh, that gets the cop in there, you know? <laughs> tin Pig. Oh, yeah, good. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robocock. Nice. Clever. C-3PO. Um, oh, probably P.O. The for class- police officer? Oh, Maybe, yeah, yeah. C three Popo, something like that. C three P. Oh, Popo, that's really good. <laughs> um, probably the classic bucket of bolts. Oh, bucket a bucket of bolts. Of bolts. That'll and that'll then, tow, that'll teach him. <laughs> that'll learn him. Uh, defective directive. Yeah, that'll mm-hmm. show him. Rhymes. Um, and then besides a car bomb, cock block. So another thing that happened was. What what almost killed Alex Murphy was a car bomb outside of his house, and he was about to get lucky with his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they it, were interrupted. Yeah, yeah, by this car bomb. By, by a fucking car bomb. So besides a car bomb, cock block. What is the worst cock block you can think of? We got a nuke drop right as your pants drop. A um, double drop. <laughs> no. A bull stampede outside of your house, mm-hmm. or a clown right. arrives. <laughs> what if the clown's into it that's uh, yeah that could go either way yeah it could go either way uh castration ouch oh anyway, yeah that one uh that'll damn <laughs> that'll damn for things right quick uh execution just straight up murdered okay mm-hmm. sex scene cock block okay i don't know if you're doing sex scenes right if that uh, made it on the list here misunderstood the the assignment i believe maybe yeah um shotgun death very specific Mm -hmm. and then we just got an emoji of a baby (laughs) okay they're always crying and pooping and stuff you know oh the baby starts making yeah yeah. okay um and then we asked you to rate robocop 2014 uh overwhelming percentage of a two out of five um, so people did not care for it, although we got a, a couple threes and a four. So, you know, overwhelming, uh, you know, 50% ish or under. Sure. I would say. Yeah. Um, and then we got some overall Robocop franchise questions real quick. Uh, favorite Robocop movie was the first one, although someone did vote for number three. I love it. Um, sure. Least favorite Robocop movie was the remake one, followed by Robocop three. Um and then what, what did you vote for on that one, Tanner? Just out of curiosity. The remake. Okay, me too. But yeah. 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 Um speaking of that, we'll do our rankings here at the end. Yeah. Um favorite Robocop actor, uh Peter Weller, of course. And somebody the the Robocop three voter probably voted for this as well. Robert John Burke, who played Robocop in the third movie. Yeah. Thought he was great, I guess. Favorite non-movie RoboCop media. Oh, this is really spread out, but the winner here is the new RoboCop Rogue City game. All right. Excellent. 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 It's the hot shit right now. Um, yeah, a little bit of everything there. People like the comics, the RoboCop versus Terminator. Um, somebody really likes the TV show, I guess. Cool. Um, and then favorite RoboCop villain, also very spread out. We got a tie between Boddicker and RoboCop 2 from RoboCop 2. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then what should they do with the RoboCop franchise? Okay, there another spread out one here. Um, yeah, a little bit of was, here. The overall winner was RoboCop versus Terminator. They should adapt that into something. A movie or a series would be awesome. Yes. And I agree. Um, I also like anything. Some, yeah, somebody wrote in anything. That's nice. Just <laughs> anything. More RoboCop. I just need more. So some people, yeah, every a little bit of everything someone voted for. One person wants a legacy sequel with Peter Weller. Someone else wants a direct sequel to the Joel Kinnaman reboot movie, which I'm surprised about. 
um, and in a new reboot as well. Well, cool. Um, oh, that's yeah. Rebel Cop. Before we get into Willy Wonka's franchise, um, let's talk real quickly. Let's do our rankings, Chris. What do you think? Absolutely. Do you want to start or should I? Oh, I'm trying to figure out if I like two or three better. That was what I was thinking about for the last minute while you were talking. Do you, ha- do you have yours ready? Yeah, I think I can let I'm you just, go first. I think I'm just going to go again. We've done this a lot in the last maybe like three franchises uh right down the middle or just like straight down um the first one's the best and the newest one's the worst so robocop one two three and then the remake fair yeah yeah although two and three you're right i did have fun with three even though i think it's I a thought, worst movie yeah so it has um, a jetpack jetpacks are it has a jetpack cool. like what's not to love about that uh yeah i mean to be contrarian i think maybe i would put three in front of two but i think i think i agree i think two's a little better um and uh favorite obviously the original and least favorite was the one we watched last week so cool yeah man that was well, a good time though. i really enjoyed that oh, franchise. Yeah. it was a lot of fun me too yeah there's yeah. there's some good ip around it too it was fun yeah yep. um i like reading comics hopefully we'll get to read the uh willy wonka frank miller comic <laughs> it's really bloody dude <laughs> really dark really sexual yeah. You thought the book was dark? No, 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 no. Um <laughs> oh, let's close the door in Robocop. Any final words besides the final words we just said? Close her up, baby. And we'll open right. up a new book, taking this metaphor way too far, uh, on the on the the Willy Swankas. The Swilly Swanka. That's the one. Um, yeah, so Willy Wonka, this movie is uh Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Came out in uh, 1971, directed by Mel Stewart, and starring, of course, Gene Wilder. So good. Um, so good, yeah. And, yeah, I will say that you you said you're reading the book, and I know they changed the title. It's called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but they changed this to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. A um, little tidbit at the front here. I don't know if you read this, but did you read why they changed the name? I did not read why. Uh, I'm assuming just because Willy Wonka is the best part of this movie and they wanted to put that up front. But was was there a different reason? Yeah. So this um, this movie was financed for three million dollars by the Quaker Oats Company. So like the producer uh, reached out to. This company that you know, this company they maybe had a candy brand starting or something like that, and they're like, "Hey, we're making this movie about candy um, and chocolate. How about you pay for this movie, and then you can make a Wonka bar and sell it, kind of like in response to this movie." So it was like a, a tie-in with this company, basically. Yes. And so they they asked the name to be changed to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to help promote sell their candy help bar. And sell the candy bar. Fact. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. And then, so like, I, I was curious, like, was there gobstoppers before? Was Wonka a thing before? And this was all original from the book. They bought the rights from Roald Dahl. Um, and then they made the Wonka candy after, like, nerds and gobstoppers and all that. Everything. Right. Because Wonka is a full on candy brand now. It was. Yeah. Apparently it's not anymore, which I didn't oh, really? realize. But for like, 20 30 years it had their name on a lot of those candies um but now it's it's not on there any, anymore who makes I believe. Sense? i mean it's like the same company but now they have a new parent company and like the the oh, names okay. have changed yeah so i think maybe over the years they fine. just fine fine this is me i'm gonna be grumpy about it you can't make me happy <laughs> yeah. about it i should have waited <laughs> till the end to tell you I'm sorry. yeah that's fine uh that's... it just came up now um but i thought that was very interesting. Yeah, big time. Uh, what, a, what a funny way to finance a movie. Like getting a... I know, exactly. Like finding a candy tie-in and then finding a, like a, a producer that just wants to sell the candy. Yeah, um, like they yeah. hadn't even made any of the candy yet or the chocolate bar. And apparently the original Wonka bar never actually made it to shelves. And then like they still use the name later on to put on different candies and okay. help sell their candy. Um. But the Wonka bar, the original Wonka bar that they were going to make for the movie never came out because of production issues or something. So the movie came out without any tie-in chocolate anyway. 
Uh, yeah. That so seems that's... like a real loss because I feel like you could put golden tickets in the Wonka bars and then kids could go to the movie for free. You know, like I it's mean, right there. Be genius. Yeah. Yeah. I think they should have done that with the, I don't know, maybe they did with the one that came out 20 or 2005 or whatever. And right. the new one coming up, they should have stuff like that. Yeah. You find a golden ticket, you get a free movie ticket. It's right there. Yeah. Easy. Maybe, maybe they did do it. We'll see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's talk about this, Chris. Do you want to get us started? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Where are we beginning? Um, we are starting in. Is this a movie in England? Is this supposed to be in London? I think it's not because not? they don't have. No, most of them are American. I'd say Willy Wonka doesn't have an accent, does he? You're right. He doesn't. I think it's uh... in the U.S. In the U.S. somewhere. Okay, we'll uh, we'll double check that. But uh, or Oompa Land, perhaps. It could be Oompa Land. Yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm way off base. Um. Anyway, uh, we start uh, at the beginning at this strange old timey candy store where children can go in, walk up to the bar, and uh, buy a candy bar from the bar from like a a candy barber is how I would describe the way that that man looks. Um. Yeah, and they're buying a uh, yep a Wonka bartender. They're buying triple cream cups. They're buying squelching snorters. They're buying scrum diddlyumptious bars, and they're buying Sizzlers, baby. <laughs> oh, I love the candy names in this. Yeah, the I don't know the so many of the little bits, the roll doll like uh, turns of phrase that made it into this movie and into the book are so clever. Uh, yeah, a scrum diddlyumptious bar. It's just wonderful. Great. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So what goes on in the candy store, Tanner? What's happening there? Well, I don't know. They're all just clamoring for candy. And, you know, they're like, how does he do it? He keeps coming up with new stuff. Do you ask mm-hmm. a bird how it flies? You know, they're, it just he just does it. Willy Wonka just does it. Yeah. Um, so, so they're setting they're, him up as a real candy genius. Candy genius, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we get a little song. This movie is... A musical um and it's got this song candy man of course the candy man can everyone knows this song um it was made for this movie yep um which i was curious about as well because it's there's so many iterations sammy davis jr made it really popular like the next year apparently um hmm. but it's from this okay yeah, yeah. um I was I found that man singing the song to be a little creepy, but as a oh, really? kid, it didn't strike me that way. So um, I'm gonna let it go. Um, Wait, are you saying the like the candy? Oh, okay, like the candy man. The man or... singing the candy man can. I thought his delivery was creepy. Oh, really? Okay, like he's yeah. getting a little too close. I didn't know. Yeah, that. it's kind of weird. Just the whole thing. It's got the vibes are off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, you know this reminded me of. There's this place. Have you ever been to Seaside, Oregon? Oh, gosh. Did we go to Seaside, Oregon together in college? Yes, actually, we did. I forgot. <laughs> so, yeah, to Seaside, Oregon. Well, there's the candy shop there that's like a really, like they do Laffy Taffy and all that, or not Laffy Taffy, but what am I trying to say? Sea salt. Sea? Uh, Saltwater salt, Taffy. Saltwater Taffy. Thank you. There we go. We got um, there together. And all sorts of whatever. Um, but they play this song, the candy man, literally over and over all day long, every single day. And oh my. I've been there many times in my life, like as a kid, that's, it's a really great candy shop, but it just, every time I think of the song, I think of how that's playing every day and how that guy must be going absolutely nuts hearing that song a yeah. hundred times a day, probably. <laughs> I can't even more. imagine. Yeah, oh I can't God. even imagine. It literally just repeats over and over again. Do you think there was a time in like 2006 or whatever when he got the store to change it to the candy shop by 50 Cent? <laughs> Let me take you to the candy shop. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe they could go be back whole, and forth between the two songs. Be a whole other vibe. Oh, <laughs> that's for sure. People dancing uh, in thongs. Oh, um, I mean, when you play that song, that just happens. That's what I think of. They come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, we just get, we get all these kids clamoring. We get the song talking about yep. all the candies and uh, they're just loving this candy. And poor Charlie Bucket, 
our main protagonist is outside just looking through the window all sad. Yeah. Um, Cause he's really poor and he he's can't too, afford any candy. He's too poor for the candy stuff, candy shop. But he goes and he gets uh, his payday, which is for delivering papers. And he gets uh, like a couple coins. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we kind of follow him on his paper route home. And so he like uh, picks up a loaf of bread and he drops off a newspaper with a couple different people um, and goes by uh, the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. So not only uh, is this chocolate genius making all these delicious treats, but it's happening right here uh, in the town that Charlie Bucket lives in. Um, and he would do anything to go inside. What a name, Charlie Bucket. <laughs> Charlie Bucket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he passes past this factory. Nothing seems to be happening there, but uh, there is this creepy old, creepy man that kind of comes up and tells him a little, I don't know what you'd call it, but he says nobody ever goes in or out. Um, yeah, just gets a, gives him, yeah. talk, you know, says a little creepy thing about the place, right? Yep. And kind of like uh, hints at like there not being any workers in this factory, right? Uh, yeah. Or not, not normal workers, uh, right. which we'll get back to um, a little later. Um, and then Charlie uh, ends up going home uh, to his house where he lives with his parents um, and uh, both sets of grandparents. Uh, Grandpa Joe is kind of the, ends up being kind of the second protagonist in this story. Uh, and then Gram Grandma Josephine, Grandpa George, Grandpa Georgina. Uh, and they all spend their days just laying in a bed. Foot they said, foot. yeah, Joe said he's been in bed for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> and then is... they, yeah, go, 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 go. Well, I mean, there's just so many, so many plot holes with this, you know? Why, why are they that? They can't even like go to what are they? go to the bath do they shit in a bedpan or something all four of them and they literally haven't walked in 20 years it's how they present it right yes and then if i was like the dad or the mom who have been like working really hard to feed all these people in their house i'd be really mad because as soon as they win the grandpa joe just jumps out of bed and does a jig he's dancing well you would too laying in bed doing nothing for 20 years you would jump for joy too and walk for the first time in 20 years if you won a lifetime supply of chocolate. Uh, I mean, you're not wrong. I, um, I wouldn't have to eat Indian food anymore that makes me sick. I could just eat chocolate. <laughs> Speaking of getting sick, they're all eating cabbage water. That's, yeah. their, that's their food is cabbage water. Um, yeah. But Charlie gets some, some bread. It's a big day for them. They get some bread. Um and he tries to give money to Joe for his tobacco. That's the other thing they consume is tobacco. Yeah. From now on, I'm going to pay for your tobacco. What a sweet, sweet thing for a boy to say to his grandfather. <laughs> but his grandpa says, no, I'm giving that stuff up. Um, I don't think he takes the money here, does he? Uh, maybe. Well, maybe he does, actually. And then later on, he buys a Wonka bar. He buys a Wonka bar with it, I think. Yeah. Um yeah, and we, then uh, also, you know, Charlie's kind of getting stories from his grandparents, and he learns a little bit more about this mysterious Wonka factory. Um, and, uh, you know, Willy Wonka is the best candy maker, and all these other uh, candy makers are trying to steal his ideas. There's a bunch of spies that were, uh, you know, coming for his stuff. Yeah, so he, like, closed the gates. They they set up that he hasn't been seen in, like, years um yeah i forget how long but it's because people were sending spies like you said trying to steal stuff so he closed the gates and hasn't been seen in a long time but like three years after he started he closed the gates apparently they weren't producing anything and then all of a sudden they started making candy again but uh nobody knows why or how and they haven't seen him or anyone go in and out of there so who is helping um great question yeah, so we get a little bit of that lore, and then we get uh, a shot in class. They're, the teacher's pretty funny in this. Mr. Turpentine? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I Turpentine. thought he was great. Both of his scenes were fantastic. Yeah, so he, they learn of the golden ticket thing. I don't know if there's any other part of this I missed, but... No, um, you're good. He learns of the golden ticket, and he immediately says, like, class dismissed. 
And then the kid's like, well, there's only five of them. <laughs> Class undismissed. What is it? He said, I can't remember exactly. They, then he the, they're in the class. chocolate bars. Anybody can find them. And then it was class redismissed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, pretty good stuff. So yeah, they could win a lifetime supply of chocolate and a tour of the factory if they get this golden ticket. Yeah. Um, um and it's a big effing deal. Um, man. it's on the worldwide news. Uh, it kicks off this crazy buying spree. Uh, people are losing their scrum diddly umptious bars over Willy Wonka and his golden tickets. It's Wonka mania. Yeah. Um, yeah. They show some scenes of the first one here is um, of like people like going crazy over it. Basically the mania. There's like a therapy session and a guy like had this dream of an archangel told him where one of the tickets is, is. And uh, the therapist is like, well, go on, tell me what he said. And yeah. Like, well, what does it matter? It was just a dream. I, I don't even. It doesn't. That doesn't matter. And the therapist like gets angry and tells like demands that he tells him what the dream said. So people yeah. are like, people are going nuts here. Um, and then we kind of get a series of. Yeah, we get like, like introduced to the the yeah. ticket winners, right? There's five golden tickets, and it kind of shows one of those kids, and then it'll give us another shot with Charlie and his family. Um. So the first uh, of those uh, other lucky winners that we meet is from uh, Dusselheim, Germany. And his name is Augustus Gloop. He's the son of a butcher. Gloop. Or Gloop um, or Gloot? I think it was Gloop. Oh, it is Gloop. Yeah. I was thinking Gloot like, uh, oh, like, your like, butt. A glutton, like a glutton or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Gloop. You're right. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what's Augustus Gloop's deal? Each one of the kids kind of has a deal. He's a glutton that's why that was glued so that's like kind of his his sin or whatever each kid kind of has like a a negative trait right yes Um, and so that's why i guess i thought his name was glued for glutton i mean Um, both i think gloop is a funnier word definitely that's That's more dull yeah. yeah um and they they interview him on the tv in germany and they say how does it make you feel he says hungry um Great German accent. Have you been doing? <laughs> uh, have you been doing impressions? He's hungry, hungry. I have been. Yeah, can you hear? Uh, it's coming um, through loud and clear. The money spent is well worth it. Uh, speaking of money spent, he spent. He says something to the effect of, uh, "They better watch out. I'm going to eat all of. They're, I'm going to cost the Wonka company a bunch of money or something like that." I feel sorry for Wonka. I'm going to cost him a fortune in fudge. Yeah, yeah. I wrote that down too. Um, and then his gluttonous dad eats the top off of a microphone that the that the interviewer holds up to his face. So uh, I yeah, missed that. Real... There's so many little bits in this movie. So many little bits, yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah, uh, a, lot right of, a lot of like replay value in this thing because there's so many little snide jokes, and especially once we meet Gene Wilder, um, this thing really starts to sing. Yeah, um, um, we get a little shot at the end of each one of these segments too. That there's like a, a creepy looking man who comes up and whispers in his ear, um, and we already know about the spies before, so you kind of get the idea. Oh, there's this creepy spy man talking yeah. to, in the ear of all these kids. You don't know what he's saying exactly, but um, yeah. Then we go back to Charlie, and he's getting a, a new scarf for his birthday. It's Charlie's birthday, birthday. and he gets this massive scarf. Um, and what else, Chris? Uh, and a Wonka bar. So Ooh. every year for his birthday, I'm not sure if this is from the book or the movie, but every year for his birthday, he gets a Wonka bar and he eats it very slowly to make it last. And this year he might win a golden ticket. And the movie kind of trick us into thinking he might've been the lucky winner. Uh, but he did not win, uh, with his birthday chocolate. Um, he did get that huge sweater, though, so not a total loss. Scarf, yeah. Sorry, scarf, not sweater. Um, so not a total to a loss. Sweater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, not a total loss. It's pretty cool looking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, then we get the next shot of um, it's Veruca in a factory. Salts. Yeah, so we introduce to her. She's a total fucking brat. She's, yeah, she's awful. Yeah, she wants every daddy give me this, daddy give me. I want the Wonka bar. So her dad is such a 
I don't even know what you want to call that. And he's just like a pushover or whatever. Um, bringing out his paycheck t- or his, uh, his checkbook to, to get his daughter, whatever she wants. Um, and they have hired like hundreds of people to open box after box and Wonka bar after Wonka bar looking for this thing. Well, um, the dad owns a peanut factory. Right. And he has just shut down all peanut operations and he's making all of his workers open chocolate bars for his daughter. So these these yeah. ladies normally are just opening nuts, right? Like yes. opening peanut shells all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Um and you know, she's so mean to daddy. She's so mean. She's so um, mean. But she finds one. She gets her wish. She got her, her golden ticket. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so now, it? now two of the tickets have been spoken for. Yeah, um, uh, and you get this little shot of you just get intercut with all these little scenes of the Wonka mania and what other people are doing in the world. So somebody has invented an, invented a machine that supposedly tells you what the remaining three tickets are going to be, um, and the machine says, "Why would I tell you where it is?" Or something? <laughs> that ruins all takes? the fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, why would, yeah, that ruins all the fun. And then he says, why would, what would a machine do with a lifetime supply of chocolate? And then he says, I'll... and then he like kind of punches in like some buttons on it and says, I'm telling it exactly what it should do with a lifetime supply of chocolate. Um, which I'm assuming he's meaning like, you could shove it up your ass, right? Something like that. I'll tell Robo you exactly ass. what you can do with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we get that little shot. And then number three, who's number three, Chris? Number three. Uh, number three is Violet Beauregard. Um, and I thought it was funny. Like the first two got like such overarching, you know, they're kind of like tropes of these, like a gluttonous child, a really spoiled child. This one's trope is she likes gum a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's just really into gum. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think of a, a deeper meaning of, of hers, right? Because I could maybe find one for the the fourth kid, but she doesn't really have a thing. My only thinking was, like, if you ran a candy factory, maybe gum chewers would be weirdos. You know, like, from that specific point of view, this is, like, an actual offense. But, yeah, it's kind of of an odd one compared to the other three, I thought. Is this annoying, maybe? Like, it's just annoying? She's always smacking her lips? Maybe. Um, Yeah. Maybe that'll be a question. What is Violet's sin or whatever violet what's her uh, deal yeah what is her deal um yeah so she chews a lot of gum forever um and we get another shot of the creepy guy both for this and veruca assault he shows up yep. each one so so that dude is doing some traveling because these people yes. are in like uh, augustus gloop is in germany uh and then two of the kids are in the united states and then at least one of the kids is in England. So he's really, he's making the rounds, this creepy man. Yep. Um, yeah. Our next yeah. shot from there goes to uh, Charlie going to visit his mom at work. Um, and he's really upset. He really wants this golden ticket. Uh, and his mom is trying to let him down easy. Um, and we get our second song of the movie, which is uh, Cheer Up, Charlie. Um, I did not remember that song at all. Yeah, neither did I. These other songs are really burned into my memory, and I've seen it a bunch of times, but I don't I didn't remember that song at all. Um, yeah. It's a um, fine song. She says something about how there's 100 billion people in this world. Like, how could you? The numbers that people say in these <laughs> are just all out of whack. Um, how many people are in the world? Like, 8 billion? Something like that? It's, yeah, 7 to 9, somewhere in there. I don't quite remember. Um. Not a hundred billion. Like how, you know, how would you expect to win all these people Mm -hmm. getting excited over the chance, like such a small chance of winning. Um, yeah. But, uh, the next one, we get the fourth kid now. Yep. Um, And it's little Mike TV, T E E wait, T E E V E E. Right. Nailed it. Yep. Exactly. T E V T V. Um, yeah. And, and his thing, to... as his name might suggest, he's into the TV. He likes watching shoot 'em up shows. He has a bunch of toy guns, and he loves TV television. So this one, it's it's maybe not as also not as bad as the first two kids, right? But he's mm-hmm. like, 
I guess the thing that they are trying to say is you don't watch so much TV, read books later on is kind of what they're emphasizing because mm-hmm. um, it'll rot your brain or something. Do you think um, that the producers of this movie reached out to big book to help them, you know, promote book? And that's why this yes. character's in the movie. Okay, great. Big, big book. Big book. book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So he's, too busy watching TV shows to give the reporter any time. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're like, you like this killing, huh? He's like, what do you think life's all about? I like this kid. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, he he's also from Arizona, Westerns. and that's a very Arizona attitude, you know? Yeah, he's got the cowboy <laughs> hat. He likes his little play guns, and his yep. dad says, you can't have a gun until you're 12. Um, Rules are important. Good parenting. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else do we get next? Uh, from here, Grandpa Joe uh, has that little bit of money that Charlie gave him at the beginning, uh, his tobacco money. And he uses his tobacco money uh, to buy Charlie another Wonka bar. But this one also is a loser. Um, and okay, we're this, still in the middle. Go ahead. This is where I'm wondering, okay, if he's been bedridden for 20 years, how is he getting up and buying Wonka bars? Great question. Was it- I, uh, the, I this movie makes no sense. I'm done. I mean, I guess he's sending the mom out to buy stuff for him, maybe. Or I love Tanner that we watched a movie with like a chocolate <laughs> river and a bunch of like orange magical like small people, and your problem with it is that there's four people that sleep in a bed together. It's fucking bullshit. Well, I don't care that they sleep in a bed together. <laughs> Or that's that they're fine, bed, you know? that they're bed Sleep with ridden. whoever you want, you know. I'm I'm open to whatever. I just I just think that the rules of the world of him staying in bed for 20 years and never leaving bed ever, like okay, then, go off, go off, yes. Then fucking have have a scene of him giving the money to Charlie to go buy the bar, or giving the money to the mom and say, "Get me a Wonka bar. I can't leave this bed. I'm an old." fuck who doesn't leave bed and could be making money for this damn family yeah yeah god all great points all great points uh oh boy no you know i'm i'm being facetious a little bit but it does you know in a world with magical things i'm totally as long as the rules are set you can do whatever you want get as wild as you want but sure. stick to the rules a wee bit i really don't care um <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, he gets I mean, another loser, though. He gets another loser. Uh, and uh, Wonka Mania is at its peak now, right? Four of the tickets are gone. There's only one left. Uh, so we get a couple pretty funny scenes. And none of these are in the book. So I, I was these. really enjoying watching these. Um, the There's a box of Wonka bars that goes on auction. And it's going for, like, thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and then my favorite one, uh, there's a... Well, the, that one, hold on. It ends with a line... It's supposedly the last one in the UK. So, yeah, they're auctioning it off. And then at the end, he says, Your Majesty. So, the, apparently, the king has bid on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then my favorite one came right after this. It cuts to another scene, and I didn't really understand what was happening for the first, like, 30 seconds of it. Uh, but there's a phone call. Somebody wants collateral from this woman. There's like a kidnapping plot. And it turns out the kidnappers, yeah, the kidnappers as ransom just want a box of Wonka bars uh, for this woman's husband. And she says she'll have to think about it. So these things are so precious. Uh, A woman won't even save them, a few of them for her husband, uh, which is (laughs) is just ridiculous. Um, Yeah, that's really good. Apparently yeah. there's some of these, some more of these little scenes that they cut out of the movie, which I'd like to see. Sometimes. Oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, what else they were, I guess the next, they go back to school a little bit and, uh, they're, they're asking people how many, how many Wonka bars they open, trying to tell them how percentages work. Right. Yeah. So like, I uh, open a hundred uh, fan as a teacher. One of the best lessons I've ever seen in my life. Mr. Turpentine teaching how percentages work. Right. And then he, because Charlie says two and he thinks 200, which would be an easy division of a thousand. But Mm -hmm. he says two, just two. He's like, I can't, I can't do just two. I can't figure out just two. Like he doesn't know how to figure out the percentage out of two out of a thousand. Um, It's hard, hard math, dude. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, 
yeah, I guess the uh, the next thing is C- kind of right in here too. We found out that the fifth bar has been found in the country of Paraguay, and mm-hmm. so the the contest is over. All five bars have been found. Um, Charlie is sad, um, and uh, yeah, he kind of starts moping about. He mopes uh, about as he does as a bucket. But while he's moping, Tanner, what does he find down there in the gutter? He finds some money. A big old what, what, what? coin. A big old yeah. coin. So shiny. And you know what? He's going to go get himself a scrum diddly umptious bar. Because yep. they're just so friggin' delicious. Wait, I mean scrum diddly umptious. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he still has this. It was such a big coin that he had more coins to buy another Wonka bar after that. Um so he gets his Wonka bar, and then he walks outside, and he sees in the newspaper that the fifth ticket found was a fraud. That's um, right. And so Whoever, there's still, yeah. Yeah, the Paraguay ticket was a fake. And because of the Paraguay ticket, people stopped buying Wonka bars, which is the only reason Charlie was even able to get one. Um, but now he has a Wonka bar in his pocket, and there's one mm-hmm. ticket left out there. I think you know where this is going. Um, it's a loser. No, it's a winner. <laughs> it's our winner. It's a, it's got, it's a good, they, they do it really nice. It's like a slow opening. It's a big triumphant reveal. Yep. Um, and he puts his hand up into the crowd and they're all clamoring around him with his ticket up in the air. Very dangerous situation. Um, I felt like he could have been trampled or murdered in this situation. Yes. I also thought that this only works in 1971 in 2023, Someone would have punched that kid in the face to take the ticket. And yeah, th- yeah that would have been the end of it. Um, um, I also was wondering, okay, with the fraud situation, how did they think that that was going to work? They just, they just mentioned that, hey, everyone, we, you know, we found this ticket. What is the end goal there? To have people stop I've... looking so that they can continue looking, you know? I guess. I mean, the, the competition ends in like a day, so maybe they thought they had a good enough fake that they – would be able to trick Willy Wonka. Also, yeah, the fake ticket would be really easy to, to, to do. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so he runs home. They're like, run home, Charlie. Run straight home. And he shows the golden ticket. Everyone's so happy. It's a happy day. Hang on for just a second, because on the way home, he meets Scarman. Oh, yeah, Slugworth. Slugworth, that's right. Uh, and this is one of the competing Candyman um, like candy makers that uh, is out to steal all the secrets from Willy Wonka. Um, and he wants uh, to pay uh, Charlie $10,000 to steal an everlasting gobstopper from the factory. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, like Tanner was talking before, I thought these were always just a candy, but apparently these are from this movie and this book, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they're just, uh, you know, making pop culture. So, um, yeah. So after that, he does run home. He shows it to the family. Um, and, uh, yeah. What happens with the family? Oh, they get so excited that grandpa Joe gets off his bum ass and stands (laughs) up again for the first time, 20 years, 20 Um, years. Yes. And you know, they play it. They do a little musical song here. But they play up the uh, the fact that he hasn't stood in a long time, and he is falling over. It's comical. They're helping him stand, and he's, you know, basically just just that. A lot of comedic. Uh, what am I trying to say? Um, yeah, physical comedy stuff. He's falling yeah, over. without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets his cane, and then they start singing and dancing. Another great song. I've got a golden ticket. Um. And they have a little musical number here. And by the end of it, Grandpa is doing a full song and dance, and he's just fine. So, you know, message to all you um, people out there that can't walk, just win the lottery or win, get find the golden ticket, and you'll get up out of your chair. And you'll pop right up. You'll pop yep. right up. Um, yeah. And they find out tomorrow is the big day at 10 a.m. So yeah, it's they're not- tomorrow already. This story wastes no time. We're going straight to the tour now. Yeah, what happens at the tour, Chris? Uh, yeah, so all the kids show up. Uh, there's a bunch of media on hand because this is such a big deal. Uh, the Wonka factory has been locked up for years and years and years, and no one has been allowed inside. 
Um, and these five lucky children that won this international competition get to go inside. Uh, they all get to bring a parent. Um, and Charlie uh, decides to bring Uncle Joe or Grandpa Joe. Um, you know, 20 years in bed. And uh, as soon as something good happens, he gets to go. And uh, yeah, so he we kind of meet it. the kids again. He earned it. He earned it with those 20 years in bed. Um, we meet the kids again. Uh, Violet Beauregard again. Gum Girl. Um, Augustus Bloop is there. Veruca Salts. The whole gang. Mike TV. And, uh, and Charlie. Charlie Bucket. Yeah, Charlie so Bucket. Uh, right at 10 a.m., the bell rings and everyone's excited. Big crowd out there. Mm -hmm. um, Wonka's just so cool. Everyone loves him. And he comes out, the door opens, and he limps out. So he limps all the way out. People are kind of like, kind of get silent and talking quietly to each other. Um, limps and all the way. And the movie way. plays this scene, drags it out. Yeah. <laughs> walking with a cane for like 30 seconds. It's fantastic. Yeah. And right at the end, he sticks the cane in the ground and does a somersault and like a ta-da. <laughs> and everyone cheers and loves it. So, yep. um, so this scene, a uh, little tid Tanner tidbit here. Please. Um, this scene was 100% um, Gene Wilder's idea and demanded he wouldn't do the movie unless this scene was in it. Specifically. Seriously? Yeah, because he wanted, he said, this has to be the way it gets introduced because from that point forward, you won't be able to tell if he's lying or not ever. Um, so it's like he wanted the character to be completely mysterious. You don't know if he's good or bad or lying or telling the truth. He, um, he wanted the character to be trolling from the moment you met him. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I from the moment that. he walks out. Yes. Yes. So that was, oh. he was very adamant about that scene. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. It is yeah. a great introduction to this character and a really totally. funny. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, so he gets everyone together and they uh, they go inside the factory. And they sure time do. For, time for all sorts of fun. There's so many things to mention during this factory trip. It's just like we I will mean, miss your favorite part of this movie. Probably uh, there is so much stuff, and it happens so quickly. Um, yeah, yeah, but right out the gate, uh, we have coat. Let's give them a are... let's give them an auditory tour of this of this facility, Chris. Ooh, what do you think? Oh, say it ain't so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. A little ASMR, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, blah, where, where do blah, we start? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, probably with the, the coat racks was kind of the first little scene. They walk in and their hands sticking out of the walls, uh, painted gold, and those are the coat racks, but the hands are human hands and they're moving. Um, and then uh, all of I the totally children... I totally missed that. I, oh, was, really? There's so many things. I literally missed that somehow. I must have been writing something. Yeah. Um, and then the kids all have to sign this enormous disclaimer. Uh, like it, it's like the iTunes agreement joke before iTunes agreements were a thing. It's like, you yeah, know, it's an thousands NDA. and thousands of words. Yeah. NDA that goes so all the way down from large font to like really teeny tiny font to the point you literally can't read any of it. Yes. Comically small. Yeah. Um, but all the kids sign it because if they don't, they're getting kicked off the tour. So everybody's on board. Um, and Wonka takes them into, uh, like this strange little, like almost like a closet and just starts hitting on the walls of this closet. Everybody's packed in there looking for a door. Um, only to leave out of the door that they came in from. Uh, but somehow what was on the other side had changed. So now they're in a different room of this factory. Um, and well, you got to go forward to go backward, Chris. That's right. Uh, and all the parents are most of the parents of, uh, of especially of the bratty children are really upset about the tour at this point. Um, already, too. Yeah, already. Yeah. Straight out the gate. Um, um, and he says, yeah, so they go out the small hallway into a, a small room, kind of Alice in Wonderland with the tiny doors and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then there, one of the parents says, what is this, Wonka, some kind of fun house? Why? Having fun? Love that. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many good lines. It's so many. Yeah. Just not stop. Uh, but, yeah. Um, and then before they leave, uh, don't lose your head, Augustus. We wouldn't want anyone to lose that yet. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really, so they get out of this creep. little closet. And uh, where are we off to next, Tanner? 
now they uh they go to the chocolate room or whatever i forget yep. what it's called chocolate room. It's, you got it yeah and you can eat almost anything he says um and there's a quick little thing there's a, a lock on the door but it's a keyboard musical lock so you have to play <laughs> a little tune on the keyboard to unlock another awesome idea um yeah and so you get a little shot of this land I'm sure everyone's seen it but you know it's got like mushrooms big mushrooms and trees it's very almost psychedelic like i said alice in wonderland vibe to it um, yeah. but everything is edible in the room there's a chocolate river a chocolate waterfall um you got gummy bear bushes growing on bushes you've got i don't know candy cane trees or whatever else so many so many things um and they all just kind of go wild and are allowed to eat whatever they want yeah um, uh meanwhile willie is singing the uh Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. And the kids are just going crazy, munching chocolate. Um, well, it's such a great song. I love this song so yeah. much. Um, it stands up. I love it. Uh, a lot of the music does, too. Um, yeah. This one in particular, I thought, had kind of like a dark undercurrent. It's like a, it's not. I don't know. Uh, it's it's maybe it's just Gene, Gene Wilder. It's but like, it's... da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Which is nice and pretty, but then it does that little twinkly kind of sound, you know, where it yeah. kind of gets like ding, dong, ding, dong, something like that. Yeah, so it has that little creepy vibe to it, too. The whole movie has a little thin, creepy vibe, of course. Yeah, um, it's part of the part of the draw. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so you get all sorts of all sorts of things. What do people even eat here? The little balloon, like not balloons, but little gummy bear things people are breaking into um much big giant mushrooms and eating like goop out of it and then um i think you see the oompa loompas now is that yeah uh you do you meet the oompa loompas um, and you get a little they they mention how the um the waterfall is actually mixing the chocolate here um, <laughs> yeah i wrote that line down no other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall, but it's the only way if you want it just right. <laughs> <Love> it. <laughs> so um, insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we get a song quite yet, but you see the Oompa Loompas, um, and he gets a little explanation of how they're little men from Loompa Land, mm-hmm. um, where they have animals like, uh, let's see, I wrote these down. A wang doodle, horn swagglers, snoz wangers, and vermi- vermituous canids. Is that Vermici- right? Vermici- I heard it as vermicious canids, but vermicious I don't know if any canids. of that stuff's words. So, yeah. <laughs> well, none of it's really words, yeah, but uh, just more Roald Dahl fun. Yep. And, um, and more Gene Wilder just fucking with these people. You know, he... <laughs> And then one of them is like, are you messing with us? And he's like, all questions must be submitted in writing. Uh, yeah, he's. <laughs> Did they say, are you fucking with us? <laughs> no, uh... <laughs> Maybe that's um, going to be in the, the Johnny Depp version that we're watching next week. Oh, I hope so. But yeah. Um, and we get Veruca Salt, the little brat who wants everything. She wants an Oompa Loompa now, daddy. Daddy, I want an Oompa Loompa. And I want it now. Um, yeah, she is awful. Uh, she's the worst. But the real, uh, the real problem child in this room is Augustus. Uh, you know, he's a glutton, and he has been allowed to roam free in a candy room, and he falls into the chocolate river. Um, and uh, his mom goes, "He can't swim." And Willy Wonka just goes, "There's no better time to learn." <laughs> Help, police, <laughs> murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has all these little just every time a child's in danger, he has this like, oh no, stop, please you know, like he little yeah. deadpan um I don't is a deadpan the way to describe that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's Wonka's concerned that he tells, you know, he's drinking out of the river, glued is drinking out of the chocolate river and falls in, and now he's contaminating the river. Um, so this giant suction tube sucks him up and, uh, he gets stuck in it cause he's a fat little kid and shoots him out through the tube. 
<laughs> and then so like the, 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 it's building like the pressure's building when he's stuck in the tube and they're all kind of watching and he's like the suspense is terrible i hope it'll last yeah one of my favorite wonkas right there yeah uh and he plays a little flute and the oompa loompas come and take uh gloop's mom away i love that little oompa or the little wonka flute thing at one point i tried to make it my um my text message received sound oh i like little... that <laughs> yeah anyway Did um, it work? is it still your text message received i can't remember it was a long time ago no no this no no it was fo- many phones ago Okay. Is this back when you had to pay and, for ringtones? Do you remember that? No, I think it was something I tried that you could make a ringtone. Okay. Um, yeah. And I never have my thing. I never, my phone does not make a sound ever. So, okay. um, yeah. But uh, then we get the first of four Oompa Loompa songs. So the classic Oompa Loompa song. Um, Chris, you said you were going to sing the whole thing right here is that <laughs> uh damn it did i did i sign that away when i signed that giant legally binding document that got really small at the end you did exactly <laughs> oh no um, oompa loompa do you do there it is that's the whole I don't thing how this one goes that's the whole thing there we go um yeah so each of these songs the oompas come out and they do a little dance and a song um and they take the parents away for each kid and it's kind of like a themed um lesson if you will for each problem child yep um and this one's about you know where are you at getting terribly fat you know it's about being a glutton being a gloop Mm -hmm. um yeah so there's that the oompa takes off after a nice little ditty and then after that i think people are upset but yeah yeah but it passes you know uh they're Wonka just is moving him through the tour and uh, kind of loads everybody up onto a paddle boat on the Chocolate River. Um, paddle and boat another down day. the Chocolate River, baby. Oh yeah, another line I wrote down. Uh, one of the one of the dads asks, "Are you sure this thing will float, Wonka?" And he goes, "With your buoyancy, rest assured." Uh, you know, <laughs> it's a sly fat dig. Oh, really is it fat or like a dumb, empty-headed? Oh, uh, both. It works. Both it works great either way. Yeah. 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 Um, um so they, yeah so they they hop on this boat a wonka mm-hmm. boat comes out and they call it the uh the wonkatania which i think is a reference to the sunken the the historically famous boat the lusitania perhaps oh what, That's do you what know I anything assume. about that boat uh so the lusitania was the i believe the boat that like sparked world war one or something um like somebody Wait, did it kill our... Franz Ferdinand? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but there the thing that the thing that uh, sparked World War One. I, I remember we had this debate of what actually um, sparked it. So I could be wrong about that. It's not that, but it was an ocean liner that was like down by something by Germans. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think it had some war implications. So I'm totally wrong about that, but um, okay, yeah, great. It's it's something I, like that. That's what I assume it's a reference to. I remember learning about it, and he's called it the Wonkatania, and I uh-huh. just yeah, that, anyway. that stuck. And um, that's this week's Tanner's boat facts. That's my inaccurate historical <laughs> um, thing of the week, which I had last week as well, and I will rectify at the end of the show. I want to oh, no. give an apology. I have an apology to make. Oh man. Okay. Involving IHOP. Uh, oh no. really? Okay. Well, <laughs> if you weren't hooked on this episode before Tanner hinted at that, you certainly are now. Yeah. Uh, so what happens on this boat ride? Uh, the boat ride's fucking crazy. It's like an acid trip. It's like uh, HR puffing stuff. There's smoke. There's bright lights. There's psychedelic videos playing. Um, real weird thing to have in a candy factory. Um, and the kids hate it, and the adults hate it, and uh, people are really upset about this this strange little cruise. Uh, but they pop off out at the other end um, at the inventing room. Uh, do you have anything you wanted to add on that boat ride? 
I did. Um, Please. You mean the the Lusitania boat ride? Yes. So yes. I, I just want to say that I <laughs> I am sort of right <laughs> because it was sunk in 1915 and war the war started in 1917. <laughs> and this was yeah okay. This was uh, <laughs> it was a major factor in building American support for the war. So oh, the okay. Germans. Um, it was two years before the declaration of war on Germany, but it was uh, a huge reason for going to war um, gotcha. to get the Americans okay. involved in it. So yeah, I'm okay. not as you were right. as I thought I was. You were um, right. Yeah, I didn't hear what you said about the boat ride, but I'll assume you got it all in. <laughs> you were reading about the Lusitania, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, I just said the boat ride was crazy, and it was a bunch of psychedelic, like HR puff and stuff, flashing lights, weird puppets strange visuals like weird stuff yeah it's just um a, yeah a dark tunnel a crazy a lot it's probably the scariest part of the movie if i had to guess yeah. like for a kid it you know wonka does this scary little um poem right it's like this little rhyming poem that's just like and he's like all bug-eyed and um saying all this weird shit and it looks very scary yes um and the the TV kid at one point says, "Boy, what a great series this will make." Um, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, what else does he say? A couple good lines here. Uncle Joe says something about Veru or Wonka says something about Veruca Salt being a lady, and Uncle Joe says, "If she's a lady, I'm a vermicious canid." <laughs> little um, little callback then... to the to Willie's story earlier. And uh, what's her name? The uh, the bubblegum chewer, Beauregard, Violet Beauregard is yep. picking her nose and says something about spitting is a dirty habit uh, while picking her nose. And then he looks at her and says, I can think of a worse one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so they get they get off the tunnel um, on the boat and it stops right at the right second um, and they get off. And where do they where do they go here? Uh, the we're in room. The inventing room, yeah. Uh, so they they pop inside. There's a bunch of Oompa Loompas running around. There is smoke and cauldrons and, like, all of the glassware that you imagine when you think about a science lab. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like colorful and liquids that. and beakers and, like, long tubes with colorful liquids. and Weird yeah. machines. Yeah. Um, he does all these crazy things, like... He throws a clock inside of one of its one of the bowls, you know, like a big cauldron. Mm -hmm. um, he throws shoes inside of another cauldron and says, "This gives it a little kick." Um, <laughs> How did he catch that? Oh, that's amazing. yeah, yeah. Okay. I actually I had to put shoes in. I didn't catch the line. I didn't connect that in the time. I was yeah. the opposite. I saw the little kick thing, and I was like, "Wait, what did he put in there?" And rewound it. Saw the shoes. Fantastic. Um, he puts a jacket at one point, just someone's jacket into it. Um, he also gets on a bike and is stirring something like using the bike pedals or like something attached to the bike. There's also exploding candy. Great for, against your enemies. Um, <laughs> and Mike TV gets kind of hit by an exploding candy. Yeah. But he's fine. Um, yeah. What else happens also here? There's, yeah. Also in here, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Uh, there's a bunch of lines. Um, I, I'm not going to go over the ones I wrote down, but we also see the everlasting gobstopper machine. Um, and we know that that's what Slugworth is after. Uh, and each one of the kids had met with Slugworth, and each one gets a gobstopper. Um, and yeah, the then, machine is kind of secret. He's like, you can't look under that. Uh -huh. um, and then you get the condescending Wonka meme shot. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um you know all, all our young listeners know exactly what i mean uh -huh. um if you don't google it anyway Go on the internet but not to the dark parts just to the good parts just to the um, good parts. and uh yeah so these ones are supposed to be everlasting like truly everlasting it will never go away so each kid only gets one um and then they head off uh, bad business model by the way Oh, really bad. Yeah. No, you know, planned obsolescence is, uh, yeah. is what capitalism is doing to us now. And this is not that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, oh, there's one other big machine in here that makes uh, three course dinner gum. 
Are we ready to talk about Violet Beauregard, Tanner? Yeah, this machine um, is crazy. It's got one part of it has like a a bee's nest making honey. And then uh, there's just like yeah. there's all these different parts of it of like things stomping on things and crushing things. Um, it's really hard to describe, but it's a giant crazy contraption. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Violet gets this little piece and is like, "Oh, this is." gum if i I don't know what she says if i can chew it this is for me or something like that um and he does another stop don't stop don't yeah (laughs) just Um, such a half-assed like attempt to to slow her down Uh, but she pops it in her mouth and then it's uh, supposed to be a three-course meal yeah Mm -hmm. yeah she goes about explaining each one of the flavors one at a time you know the meat and the potatoes and uh finally getting to uh, blueberry pie and cream, uh, the mm. dessert for the three course meal, and uh, her face what starts would, to turn. What would your ideal three course meal uh, gum be? Oh, great question. Um, we'll save it for the survey. Save it for the survey. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I would say just like off the top of my nog, uh, okay. maybe some gr- grilled cheese and some uh, some tomato soup, okay. and then a nice bowl of ice cream. Ooh, nice! Circle through those flavors on my on my three course gum. Uh, but yeah, it. take a take a peek at the survey. Uh, add your own. <laughs> uh, but what happens to Violet after she uh, finishes eating up this gum, Tanner? She turns into a blueberry. <laughs> she she uh, sure does. She turns blue and expands into a giant balloon, um, round blueberry human. Um, and Walk is like. This happens every time. They all become blueberries. <laughs> uh, and she's like, well, she's she's not full of air. And they're like, she's going to pop. She's full of juice. She needs to be squeezed immediately before she explodes. <laughs> yeah, take her down to the juicing just, room. Yeah, the juicing room. Yeah. Uh, I just love these little kids get like fates worse than death in this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, like Mike... Yeah, anyway, we'll get to Mike TV later, but uh, yeah. We get a little Oompa Lesson song as well. We do, uh, yep, and a little flute action. What was the What was the point of the song in this one? Just don't chew gum. I don't, don't remember. Guess. Don't, don't chew gum. Don't be annoying. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, we move along the tour here. She's gone. She's out of the picture. Um, once these kids are gone, you never see them again. Yep, but uh, I think they're, they're. It's not like they're killing them. I don't think. Um, but uh, they come into a room with cool fruit wallpaper. But it's not just cool fruit wallpaper, which is very cool. It's Pretty lickable. Cool. You can lick the walls, and it tastes what, like what, what? Fruit that you lick. I know. Why have they not made this yet? I don't know. That is a straight up mystery. And he's like, uh, you know this. Tastes like whatever you're licking. The strawberries taste like strawberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> That's one of those lines that I forgot was from this movie. That's yeah, so much. Yeah, well, it and, got put in. Was it's in Super Troopers, right? When they're talking to the cops. I bet that's what it is because our generation said it a bunch, and it's, that's probably I think it's from, from that. Super Troopers. At the very beginning, they have to eat all those drugs to get the cops to go away, and that's what one of the guys is saying when the cops are outside. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good call. That's, that, yeah. Uh, but again, came from this movie. There's a ton of little snippets that uh, that have kind of made it into the public consciousness. Uh, so even if you haven't seen this movie, you've kind of seen this movie. Oh, you've seen um, it. Oh yeah. Uh, and then we're off to fizzy lifting drinks, right? We're just kind of going room to room at this point. Yeah. Um, and they're not ready for public consumption, uh, but Grandpa Joe and uh, our sweet, sweet Charlie Bucket uh, both take a drink and they float up in the air, surrounded by bubbles. They're doing flips. Uh, they're having some good grandpa, grand- grandson fun. Um, but it's not all fun and bubbles. Mm-mm. Um, yes, they're headed towards a giant fan. Reminded me of Highlander 2. <laughs> <laughs> Great callback. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, so they're headed up this corridor, flying around, and almost hitting this giant fan, and they're like, oh, fuck. Like, we, we fucked up. We're going to die here. Um, but luckily, Grandpa Joe burps, as he is known to do. Everyone knows Grandpa Joe 
Grandpa mm-hmm. Joe and his burps. He's a burpy boy. Nasty <laughs> Joe. Um, <laughs> and it, but luckily the burp this time saves them. Uh, he burps and starts going down. So he has Charlie burp and they belch their way to the bottom. Yep. They burp <laughs> their way sound. to victory. Safe and sound. Yep. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So they they catch up with the group like they never left. Nobody notices they were gone. Um. No Oompa Loompa song for them. Then we get uh, a scene with a golden goose egg room. Um. And this it's is a, the goose is quadruple size and it lays octuple size eggs. What happens one of if one of them breaks, Chris? An uh, omelet uh, fit for a king. There we go. Yes. 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 Uh, so yeah, it like comes down this, I don't know. They have these geese shitting out massive golden eggs and it goes down a little contraption onto a bed or a little seat. And it's either, it weighs it as either a good egg or a bad egg. So that thing is called the egg decator. (laughs) That's right. The egg decator. Uh And, uh, one of the, one of the dads at this point is like complaining about how stupid this is. And Willy Wonka uh, says, a little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest men. Um, oh. I thought that was nice for this movie because this movie is absurd, but that's what makes it fun. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And of course, uh, bratty little Veruca Salt. Uh, she wanted an Oompa Loompa before. Now she wants one of these golden gooses. Um, she wants it now. I want my golden goose, daddy. Give me um, one, dad. Daddy. And he pulls out his checkbook and is like, all right, Wonka, what, how much do you want? Name your price for this golden goose. Um, and Wonka is not selling. Yeah. Yeah. They're not for sale. How does uh, she? So basically, you know, you can see the good egg, bad egg. You can see where that's going. Uh, somebody's going to become a bad egg. Um, how does she? How, what happens here? I forget how she gets on the chair. I mean, she starts saying about how she wants it now and she kind of walks towards it and starts climbing oh, there's a up. Song. That's right. Oh, there is a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The I want it now song, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it kind of ends with her falling over onto the chair, right? And then it says bad egg and she gets... Bad egg and drops her down the egg chute and uh, no more Veruca Salt. And honestly, the dad doesn't seem that concerned <laughs> and I don't blame him because she's... She's by far the worst child in this. She's movie. the most insufferable part yeah. of this movie. Yes. Well, so yeah. great performance by whatever little actress that was back in 1971. Yeah, um, we're going to get that. That's Julie Don Cole. Oh, there we go. You, Julie Don Cole, you really made me hate that character. So well done. Good job. Yeah. Um, um, go yeah, for it. so we get a little Oompa Brat song. Um, yep. Oompa Loompa song about don't be a little brat um good moral and i think isn't part of this one about how like bad parents create bad children like the parents are to blame when yeah i think that was part of this one too um yeah that's a good good point yep um yeah then we're just moving moving right along the next scene i believe is on this giant car contraption thing right yep the wonka mobile and it's like shooting out just foam, or is that supposed to be like icing? Well, the the Wonka mobile runs on foamy soda, so like, okay, that's what it is. The, so like, wait, yeah, it shows him like fueling it up at the beginning with like club soda and ginger beer and ginger soda and all these like bubbly drinks. Um, yeah, and so once it starts running, it's just spewing foam everywhere. Um, and at this point, it's just Mike TV and his mom. And uh, Charlie and Uncle Joe, or and Grandpa Joe and Willie, we're down to just the final five here. Um, and uh, yeah, they get foamed up, but then they pass by a wall, which is the Wonka Wash, and all of a sudden pop out the other side, perfectly clean. It's it's like the Wonka Wash, but they he says it's spelled backwards, so I don't know how you'd say Wonka Wash backwards. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna try. Ha. Asawa Kana. Yeah. There it is. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. we're out of that room um, and off to the Wonka Vision room. This is very um, cool. 
And uh, yeah, I love the visuals on this. They put everybody in these funny like white suits and they bring out this enormous Wonka bar because everything on TV looks smaller. So you have to start with a Wonka bar that's bigger. Uh, but Willy Wonka is, has, has been working to send chocolate bars uh, over like TV waves to your TV. And we get yeah, a demo of that. Just, I mean, they make it about TV, which is weird to me. But it's basically yeah. he just he invented transportation, like teleportation, uh, teleportation. Yeah. 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 Um, but they do make it all about like TV waves specifically. Yeah. Um, which made me think like, it'd be so cool if you could see an item on TV and just buy it. And it just, you know, comes into your TV screen and you have it. <laughs> it was just there immediately. It's just there immediately. Call Jeff Bezos. Um, I'm sure he's working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so what what exactly happens here? Well, Mike Mike TV decides he wants to be the first person sent through TV waves. Um, so he runs up, and once again, Willy Wonka's like, "No, stop! Don't do it! Come back!" Uh, but he gets sent through, and now he's super tiny. He's super excited about it too. Like this made his day. It's um, the best thing that ever happens to me. Yeah, That's ever yeah, happened yeah. to me. I mean. <laughs> And then this is the thing I, I was talking about before. Uh, as as far as like a punishment worse than worse than death, they send him to the taffy pulling room to stretch him back out to normal size, which oh, is a, a great great resolution to that little bit. Yeah, um, so they I love the they shrink him and they have all sorts of unique filming techniques here. Like, um, oh well, there's some sh- shots where they pick him up and it's obviously like a little doll or something. Um, but then they have like the forced perspective thing where he's tiny right there. And also when it's looking out from behind him out, um, it's just like a, it's like his mom is on a giant screen in front of him to make her look bigger. Um, just a lot of inventive filming techniques I thought during this scene. Yeah. Um, which for, for a movie that was produced in order to sell chocolate bars, this movie is so much better than it could be, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think I don't know if it's produced to sell chocolate bars, but they that's how they they got the financing. That, that's where their yeah. financing came from, right? Yeah. yeah. This could have been a way bigger it's genius. Cast, and it's yeah. it's just yeah, it's got all these great little moments. Yeah. Um and then we get the final oompa. They call him a puzzle. I don't know if that's supposed to be but a, a little lesson from the oompa loompa is about not watching TV and reading books. Yep. Um and uh, the tour is over, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So uh, Charlie and Grandpa Joe are the only people left. And as Wonka is walking them out of the office, he's like, for sure, giving them the cold shoulder. He's acting like kind of a dick. Um, and uh, Grandpa Joe is not having that because he was he, you know, uh, Charlie was promised a lifetime supply of chocolate. And uh, Willy Wonka seems to be going back on that. He is a, a con man. Uh, this is not acceptable. So they barge into his office. Uh, his office also is insane. It has a bunch of weird pinstripes and like half things. Like yeah, half everything is in half. Yeah. Like Do you half know a the, desk, half a lamp. Was there, is there meaning to that? Or is it just a weird thing that they thought up? I think is it's there... just a, a weird thing. Yeah. Okay. Like the safe is just in half. Yeah. Everything's in half. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I didn't. I didn't pick up on any meaning. I, I just well, maybe there's a pun or something that I'm missing. I'm not really sure. Uh, You'll probably it's find another out weird, pun. another weird character thing for a weird character. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically, uh, because they had drank the the fizzy bubbly water, uh, they had rescinded their rights to the lifetime supply of chocolate, and uh, they need to get out of the factory now. Um, yeah. he says, you know, you don't win, you failed because you, you drank the bubbly water, um, you broke the rules, um, and you know, basically, it's okay to give. You like, get nothing. You lose. You nothing. Good day, sir. <laughs> yeah. So they start to leave, and I think he mentions something about Slugworth or something, right? Um, or about the Gobstopper, and so Charlie has a change, you know, not a change of heart necessarily, but he's like, oh shoot, like. I'm not going to sell the the treat to uh, Slugworth to Slugworth, and he gives the gobstopper stopper back, which da 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 was the, passing the test. That was the test all along. That's right. 
Um, and he's so happy, you know, you gave it back. You're not going to rat me out and sell my secrets, um, which means he's pure of heart and a good oh. kid. Yeah. I he's know. the so sweet. Oh, sweet little Charlie Bucket. Little Bucket. Sweet little Bucket. Um, and you find out Slugworth comes in, and it's not Slugworth at all. It's uh, somebody that works for him. Um, he was a fake the whole time. That was the entire test. The test was, are you going to rat me out or not? That's right. Um, and he says, come, come. We have so much time and so little to do. Uh, strike that. Reverse it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so he's all excited. Charlie's going to get uh, a lifetime supply of chocolate. And But he's like, and that's not all. Follow me into the great glass Wonka Vader. Um, so this, they get in a big elevator after this. And he says how it goes always. Upways, sideways. Down ways, all the ways. Um, slant ways, yeah. Slant ways. And he asked Charlie to press this button that's never been pressed. And this elevator shoots out into the sky, and it's a flying elevator. What? Whoa. <laughs> um, I was thinking. No, how sick stop. I... Come back. <laughs> I was thinking how sick I would be in that thing. Oh, I'd be vomiting. <laughs> Worse than you last night. Absolutely absolutely um and you find out the kind of ends here they're in the elevator and you find out that he is going to give his entire factory to charlie and his family um so that's that's what he wins he wins yep. the inheritance of this entire factory um and it was all a game to find out who is most worthy of it um and he says he wants to give it to a child because an adult would want to do things their own way but I guess a child can be molded to how he wants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but or basically, weird, you know. but okay. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Someone else come in with, with my ego and have like, I want to do things my way because I'm a man. But you know, he wants somebody who's like pure of heart. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's how it ends. Is there anything else I missed? I think that's it. I think we got all got all the beats. Uh, so what did you think, Tanner? Well, the last line of the movie is, uh, don't forget the man who suddenly got everything he ever wanted. And then Charlie says, what happened? He lived happily ever after. <laughs> it was like, I was about to teach him a little lesson, but uh, the lesson is, everything is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when, you, if win. you win. The lottery, Everything's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you win the lottery. Nothing bad will happen. Um, everyone will still like you, even though you have all your money. Um, anyways, yeah, Chris, you asked me how I liked the movie. I loved it. I loved it. I don't know what else Great. to say. I mean, I've seen yes. it many times. It holds a dear heart in my, in my, or a dear spot in my heart. Uh, does that make sense? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. ever since childhood, you know, I'm sure lots of people feel the same way. Um, I was trying to think of the, the timeline and trajectory of its popularity because, you know, it came out in the 71, but everyone I know has seen and loved this movie. Um, and I know it wasn't a huge hit right off the bat, but it was played on TV, like every Thanksgiving, um, like three or four Thanksgivings in a row. And it kind of gained popularity after that. Um, and then I guess video sales became a huge, huge cult classic. Um, and I imagine when Gene Wilder died too, that, this got another big bump up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> which was only like six, seven years ago. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this, this movie is, uh, held the, the test of time very well. What'd you think? Yeah, without a doubt. Loved it. Yeah. It's fantastic. The writing is amazing. The story's hilarious. It it's like, I also just love that this whole movie, the whole story is built around food because as a viewer or reader, it's, it's just so it, it pulls you in with all these funny names and these, like you're imagining these smells and these tastes and stuff as you're going through these things. Uh, and it's just such a, such a fun way to tell a story. I think it's, it's really, really great. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic. I know that Roald Dahl um, disowned the movie. He didn't like it. I think because maybe it was too like, too kitty, you know, I, but, and sometimes with that, I could see it being an issue, but this movie still pulls it off very well, you know? Yeah. Um, 
yeah, and I'm I'm reading the book right now, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But it seems to be a pretty faithful adaptation of his books, and he helped with the the screenplay too. So I don't know what uh, he I don't know. did at first, I think, but apparently he like didn't finish like turn it in on time so they just like had someone else finish it yeah oh um, i see maybe that's why like he doesn't that. like it maybe that's why yeah. he doesn't like it yeah something like that yeah i think it just wasn't exactly it's an adaptation you know that's sure every adaptation gets changed a little bit um but uh yeah we we usually ask in a movie like this chris is this timeless or a time capsule i think i know your answer it is timeless without a doubt for me yeah absolutely one of the best kids movies of all time absolutely definitely yes yeah um yeah it's just there's nothing else like it still you know it's just so original so unique so fun funny um crazy and it's got all whimsical the, all the yeah, yeah it's got everything you want and the music holds up it's great the performances are great um i can't say enough about it it's a five out of five do you have any beef with this movie we usually do like a little uh, MVP or beef. Um, you got any, um, anything you would do different? Maybe Johnny Depp instead of Gene Wilder? Would that be your first That's change? Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> that's what exactly what I was going to No, I think the only beef, it's not even beef, but I didn't realize, I forgot how long the opening was. Like the... The, the scene first, with the family? Just the all the beginning of it was like... Um, the first hour of the movie. So you don't see Wonka or maybe like 45 minutes of it. You don't see Wonka sure. until 45, 50 minutes into the movie, probably halfway. And it just, to me, I didn't, I forgot how long all that was. Um, Cause it seems to me like you just, Oh, you get a few things at the beginning and then you're right there in the, uh, in the chocolate. In the box. factory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's my only thing. It's not beef. Do you have anything? I wish the movie had ended with Charlie pushing the button. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I mean, I think that stuff at the end was fine. He inherits the museum and the they shoot up in the air. But uh, I know that the book has a sequel called Charlie and the Glass Elevator or something. Um, and uh, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, excuse me. Um, and, you know, they could have left it open for a sequel with Gene Wilder, which I think we would both enjoy very much. Um, mm -hmm. And... I, I feel like it also, it would have been more fun for me for Willy Wonka to have remained a little bit more mysterious and like a little, I don't know, but it's not real beef. I love this movie. I think it's, it was, it was a great time revisiting this with you. Um, and uh, I think, I think if you like, if you wanted those changes, that's exactly yeah. what they tried to do in the, in the remake. With Tim oh, Burton. okay. There yeah. we go. So they definitely make it more mysterious and weird. You know, I think that's uh, going to be part of the, the remake. So, okay. I well, we'll you, see I if I, you... I ask for it. We'll see if I like yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope you like what you asked for. Um... <laughs> I did, I did the fuck around and then next week we'll find out, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was wondering, you know, we talk about where it could go from here with the sequels and all that. And there is a sequel to the book. And maybe we can find out more over the next week or so. But yeah. uh, I don't know why there wasn't a sequel ever made. You know, nothing really happened with this IP until, besides the candy itself, until the remake in 20, 2005. So, you know, 34 years. Yeah. Um, And, you know, part of it I did see is it kind of had a slow roll. Um, I guess let's say now the box office was $4 million on a $3 million budget. So... I, it sort of made its money back. Um, yeah. And then later on was re-released in theaters like 20 years later and made millions of dollars, like not, you know, 20 million or something. So it eventually was like a success and obviously has long lasting appeal, but it, but wasn't, it wasn't like a, a at the time. Yeah. It wasn't a cash cow or anything. Um, sure. But, you know, so many, you know, we're in the, the years of nostalgia right now and everything is coming back and being remade you know, the whole point of this podcast. And I feel like what they're doing now with the Wonka coming out in a few weeks um, is really trying to turn it into a massive franchise. That's kind of yep. what it seems like, which is why we chose this movie. When you put Tim um, Timothy Chalamet in there, you know, it's going to be at least a two, three parter, you know? Absolutely. A little franchise king right now. 
Well, I was wondering because yeah, it's supposed to be the origin story of Wonka. I wonder if they're going to go in and make like a, an actual um, remake of this, another remake of this movie, um, and then maybe the sequel too that we never yeah. have had. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, what What do you think as far as like should they? Well, I don't know. It's hard to ask. Should they make a sequel or not? What do you think? Should they have made a direct sequel with? With the same, I mean, I, I would love another Dean Wilder movie about Charlie and Child Chocolate Factory. So yes, I think so. But uh, you know, they had they had the book right there with the the Great Glass Elevator. But it really does sound like it didn't make a ton of money at the time, and the second one doesn't have the same. You know, you can't go to an elevator company and try and get them to to finance this thing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, got a. I just had a little feedback on your phone there. Some weird stuff. Um, oh, my apologies. Yeah. No worries. Um, let's see. Yeah, what, what What else can we talk about with this? Um, yeah. Do we jump into milk? You got any milk for Should us we? this week? Or I feel like we missed, we missed something here, but I guess did we go over? Yeah, no, that's that's all of it. We, I do have. We didn't, I, do, we didn't do MVP. You got an MVP? Oh, it's Gene Wilder. I think mm-hmm. for me. What about you? Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> I asked <laughs> no, that question geez. fully knowing the answer. Yeah. Um, uh, his, his little yeah. one-liners all throughout, and that opening sequence where he walks out of the cane and does the the somersault. It's all it's all gold, man. Oh, I know oh. what it was that I was gonna say. Um, just uh, some more tidbits. You know, I talked about the box office, um, but this was also nominated for an Academy Award for the score. So okay. it did have some acclaim at the time. People definitely liked it. Um, and a Golden Globe nomination for Gene Wilder. Um, so, you know, it was a, it was a well-received movie, I think. Just uh, took a while to really catch on. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that was it. That's all I was going to say. Just mention the Academy. Got I need to thank the Academy. Um, mm-hmm. But... Uh, yeah, let's talk about milk. Do you wanna do you wanna get us started, or do you want me? Yeah, to um, yeah. I'm gonna read the two Roald Dahl books uh, as we go through these. So I made it. I made it about halfway through uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory one this week, um, and it is uh, just so charming. His way with words is so great. He's just such a good children's author, um, and. Um, yeah, I had one little snippet that I just really loved when uncle Joe, when grandpa Joe finds out that he has won or that Charlie won the ticket. Uh, he just has this bit. Uh, let's see where I wrote it down here. Uh, the color was rushing to his cheeks and his eyes were wide open, shining with joy. And in the center of each eye, right in the very center in the black pupil, a little spark of wild excitement was slowly dancing. And I just, I mean, roll doll can, he, yeah, I have nothing bad to say about Roald Dahl. Uh, such, a, such a good book uh, so far. I'm really enjoying reading it. And uh, I read he it read... when I was a really little kid. Um, so, yeah. like, I haven't revisited it since. Um, and, yeah, I, he just has such a fun way with words. It's also whimsical. He has so many little puns and bits, and it's just, like, <laughs> really fun. Uh, have you read but... much Roald Dahl? Uh, James the Giant Peach, uh, BFG. I think that's about it. Uh, but I might, I might do some more after this. I'm really enjoying this. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, a couple of things uh, in the book. Uh, Willy Wonka has a little black goatee, and it was really funny for me to imagine Gene Wilder with a little black goatee in this movie. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I don't know. Too bad. Um, yeah, I'll, maybe another time. Yeah, another <laughs> adaptation. Some- <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Timothy Chalamet has a little black goatee. We just don't know. I think yet. in the movie, the new movie ends with him getting a black goatee. <laughs> Perfect. That's, that's how it ends. Yeah, the, his origin story. That's the cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'll uh, I'm gonna finish that up before next week, um, and so cool. I'll be able to talk about the rest of that one this go round. And then uh, I'm planning on reading the Glass Elevator before um, before our final uh, installment of the Wonka franchise. Awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. What have you been up to, milk wise, my friend? Oh, I'm glad you said that. Um, I have a little milk, or maybe I could say buttermilk, um, because I went to IHOP. 
up and had the new Wonka pancakes. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I had, we had to t- take my girlfriend's oh, my cat to the vet and I had to, uh, we had to go to Tacoma at like 7 a.m. So we had to spend the whole day there. And I was uh, like, let's go to IHOP for breakfast. I want to get these Wonka pancakes before I forget. Um, and I just sent you a bunch of photos if you want to look through those. Me documenting oh. me, myself eating them. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> basically, it's just uh, it's a it's a movie tie-in at at IHOP, and the, I only got the pancakes, which is drizzled in purple uh, cheese, uh, purple cream cheese icing. It's got cheesecake mousse in there. It's got. Uh, whipped cream and gold edible sugar on top um, wow and it, honestly it was pretty delicious it's just like <laughs> a really cheesy cream cheesy desserty delicious pancake okay. um and there's all sorts of things like the wonka burger i might try to go back and document all these things there's like little chocolate taco <laughs> things little pancake tacos uh and the craziest thing on the menu, which the guy was like, do not order that. The, the worker basically told me to not order this thing because it's really annoying. It's like this pink lemonade drink uh, that has, um, it's like sprinkles on the side and then a big thing of cotton candy on top. Oh, my so, gosh. Cream cheese icing, rainbow sprinkle rim, and topped with a cloud of <laughs> cotton candy. <laughs> uh yeah so Yikes. there's also in case i don't make it back scrum don't scrum diddly umptious strawberry hot chocolate uh, which is probably pretty good the wonka yeah. burger it like it sounds gluttonous and good to me but it, i don't understand how it has any wonka uh tie-in at all i'm looking it's at just, your screen it just looks like a burger with a lot of stuff on it yeah it's got tomato oh. onions pickles uh four cheese avocado two strips of bacon hash browns, IHOP sauce, and a ranch drizzle. Um, what but, part of that is Wonka? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe just that it has so many things. It's called the Fantastical Wonka Burger. Okay. Um, I feel like they should have made the buns with... purple or something. You know? Oh, 100%. That's what I was and, thinking. And yeah. then you're there. You know? just like, Look at all these other, other desserts. It's like has all these crazy candy additions to it. You got yeah. the the daydream berry biscuit, which is purple drizzle. That's all you need. Get some purple drizzle on there. For real. Yeah. Or even do like the, like dye the ranch purple, you know, yeah, just make, make it, make it Wonka sauce and it's got purple sauce on it. Yeah. Instead it's, I have sauce, but it could just be Wonka yeah. sauce. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is just like a, I don't know, a berry biscuit, chocolate tacos, strawberries and a chocolate taco thing. Yeah. And then the Wonka's perfectly purple pancakes, which is what I had. Which is what you so, had. Okay. Anyway, Great. this is just a, <laughs> a Tanner, fun... this is this is maybe my favorite moment in our entire podcast that you went to IHOP and uh, I get to listen to you tell me about the Wonka menu. <laughs> it was delicious. I hope you enjoy my photos as well of me eating at seven in the morning. Print them um, off and, and put them up in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be okay, don't do that. That's a little creepy. A little too no, much. Uh, okay. Oh, I'd like it actually. No, um, yeah, so that's that. Just a shameless, I don't know if it's shameless. It's just kind of a funny. So basically, when I saw that, I was like, this is where the Wonka franchise is going. You know what I mean? It's becoming yes. like a put it on anything, you know, a tie in, cash grab tie ins to all these different restaurants or places. Um, I believe there's a, a new candy it- coming out that's supposed to go along with the movie as well. What's it's going to be like the McRib at some point where a new Wonka movie gets pooped out and then, then you know, 15 restaurants come out with purple drizzled stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, every year get your, your Wonka pancakes. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I also saw this new movie is like a, a Christmas movie, which I just, I don't know, I guess now it's a Christmas franchise. Um, oh. Anyway, yeah. So that's that. Um, that's my buttermilk of the week. You like that? I love it. Love it so much. Yeah. I'd been it planning was that all week. Week. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But uh, I do have one little piece of milk that I watched half of, and I won't be continuing, I don't think. Uh, but I watched. You get to that, did you say you had an apology for IHOP earlier? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Can we get that out of the way here? Oh, I'm so glad you reminded me because I I was so upset about it after last week. I looked up something I said, and I was just totally wrong. I had mentioned on the last on last week's podcast that um, IHOP had officially changed its name so that the IHOP doesn't stand for International House of Pancakes anymore. And I had I had said that it just is IHOP and now it means nothing. There is no acronym, right? Do you remember me sure. talking about yeah, that? Yeah, I do remember you talking about that. Um, and so I was totally wrong. So what that was KFC that did that, which KFC does not actually stand for Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. It's just they, they changed it to Kitchen Fresh for a hot second. Yeah, and now I think it just doesn't yeah. mean anything, right? Technically, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, according to their lore. Um, but uh, I was confusing it with the fact that um, IHOP did for a brief minute, like five or six years ago, change their name to officially mean international house of burgers um, i remember that happening okay yeah so this yeah. is where i got it all confused mix that up with the kfc um and that was just to promote maybe for like a week or two like they had some they're trying to promote you know you can come here for burgers and dinner as well it's not just pancakes um so that was just a marketing stunt that they did honestly super stupid marketing stunt but i still yeah. remember it which means it was a very effective <laughs> marketing stunt you know and you know now i know i can go to ihop any time of the day it's not just for you know late nights after the bar or early mornings in tacoma that's right um, tell them chris and tanner sent you exactly you get a free uh dollar off any burger um that's not true <laughs> You're, I'm not paying anyway, for that. Uh, I maybe feel like I'll, a maybe I'll give you some purple drizzle to put on your pancakes or hash browns or whatever. Ah, uh, for drizzle. Yeah, mm -hmm. I uh, I feel like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders right now. Um, it's been weighing on me for seven straight days. I'm Ugh. glad you could come clean here on the air. I hate when stuff. I say something like fact like that on on this, and like it turns out to be untrue, like the Lusitania. Um, <laughs> Anyways, um, you fixed that one in real time, though. Yes, exactly. I'm just gonna look up everything I say as I say it now. Um, <laughs> so we got that out of the way. The apology. The last piece of milk before we end the show is uh, I watched. There is a Tom and Jerry version of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, did you see this at all? No, I'm listening. Okay, it's just called Tom and Jerry. Uh, colon Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, it's from 2017. It's a full 80 minute animated movie, and it's it's basically I watched maybe 45 to 50 minutes of it, and uh, it's the crossover event everyone was calling for. Yeah, it's literally Robocop just... and Terminator step aside. It's Wonka it's... and Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, except it's literally just a. Every scene, almost beat for beat, is a complete remake of the movie. Like, every single... They do the same lines, the same shots. They go to the candy. Like, every single scene, except for surrounding it, is little bits of Tom and Jerry doing their antics. So, like the, it didn't really... Like, Augustus Gloop and Willy Wonka and Veruca oh, Salt, yeah. but also Tom and Jerry are there. Yeah, it's like there's even the opening at the... Can there's just, like, a candy factory, same opening... Uh, the Candyman song with the kids. Um, and then Tom and Jerry are just kind of in the outskirts doing things. Or it's like, it's focused on them running amok and hitting each other or whatever. But then <laughs> around it is the movie happening. So just imagine the same movie animated, same lines, even same jokes half the time, uh, but like sped up and like the scenes are kind of cut in half. But then Tom and Jerry are kind of like making these things fall into place. Like they're getting him a Wonka bar and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and at one point they eat like Charlie's bread. Um, but luckily he has another loaf of bread that he gives to his family. Um, yeah. Everything is just a complete remake, but with Tom and Jerry surrounding it from what I can see. Um, yeah. So Seems unnecessary. It's completely unnecessary. I think the reviews were pretty bad. It's just like, why, why does this exist? <laughs> um, but it seems like, 
you know, it's not a it's a direct to video kids thing. It also looks like uh these Tom and Jerry movies, there's a bunch of them like uh Tom and Jerry Wizard of Oz, Tom and Jerry meets Sherlock Holmes, um Nutcracker, Robin Hood. Robin oh my Hood. god, look at all these. Tom Fast and Jerry and the, the Furry. Fa- <laughs> Fast the Furry. The Lost Dragon. So they so just plug Tom and Jerry into Tom, everything. This sounds like it's more of a Tom and Jerry thing. Yes. Oh wait, what did yeah. you say? This sounds like less of a Wonka problem and more of a Tom and Jerry problem. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. It just it's just an example of them using the IP, you know. Oh, yeah. I, know. I wouldn't call it in the uh I wouldn't we wouldn't have an entire episode dedicated to it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um so there's that. That exists. That's a thing. Um it's very lazy. Yeah, it's just literally just the exact same movie. Um but yeah. Oh. That's that's my milk. It says original movie on it on the cover. That is not <laughs> true. It's literally <laughs> the same lines even. The it, uh Jerry there's like a mouse version of the Oompa Loompas as well. I don't know. Okay. Um yeah. So that's a thing that exists. That's all I'm going to know about that. That's all you need to know. It'll never yep. come up again, I promise. <laughs> great. Great, um, great, great, great. Yeah, I think that's that's everything we got. Anything else on uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Chris? I think that's it. And we'll, uh, yeah, uh, remember, uh, ch- check the show notes. We like to, to put surveys in there. Um, make some jokes with us about uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, fill this out our survey, survey. And we'll see you guys is, next week. This survey is the show. So, Mm -hmm. you know, play along. Everyone's seen it. I don't care if you, you don't need to rewatch it tonight, right now. You can play along. You've seen the movie. Come on. That's my, that's my ploy. I love it. uh, Yeah. Let's push for it. That's your Um, pitch. That's my pitch. Thank you. That's what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on Milking the Franchise. The Cash Cow Chronicles. Moo. Moo.